Once again, welcome back. On behalf of everyone here at Safe Haven Ministries and the Table Talk, we wish you a happy Sabbath. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for our many blessings. We are grateful for the safe travels we've enjoyed. We are grateful for the Bible study that we just ended. And Father, we ask that you open our hearts, our minds, and our eyes as we get ready to start with the second half of this service. And Father, please let the words I speak be your words, not mine. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I was listening on radio a couple of days ago. And DJ kind of issued a challenge. Now, the question was, how many books are, or how many chapters are in the book of Luke? Now, the first thing that popped in my head was there's 24 chapters in the book of Luke. And I was wondering where this DJ was going with this. Well, what she said was, I challenge you. For the next, starting tomorrow, which she started on the 30th, and she's mentioned it again yesterday and every day, and she says, I challenge you, take one chapter of Luke for the first for the 20, first 24 days of December and read one chapter a day. Study it. She says, basically, Luke is... And if you think about it, Luke really is. It's a condensed version of Jesus' entire life. And if you start in studying it, you'll get to know Jesus better. And with Christmas coming on, as she said, by the time you get to Christmas Day, even though we know it's not the actual day of Jesus' birth, because nobody knows that actual day, it still will get you closer and help you to understand why we really need Jesus in our lives. Now, I started this, and I've already read chapter 1, chapter 2, and everything. And oh, But in chapter 2, what I want to go to is when the shepherds were out and everything. And this is Luke 2, verse 8, and everything. And I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Then the angels had returned to heaven. The shepherds said to each other, Let us go to Bethlehem. Let us see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village, and they found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. And after seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherds' stories were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they'd heard and seen. And it was just as the angel had told them. Now... Many today think you have this modern conception of an inn. They're thinking basically a motel. No. When the census was being done at this time during Augustus Caesar's reign and everything, everybody had to return to what was their ancestral hometown. Well, both Joseph and Mary were descendants of David, the king of Israel. Now, Mary was a virgin, virgin birth of Jesus and everything. And her lineage is also given in the Bible as being part of David's family. Everybody sees the lineage from Joseph and everything. Joseph, he did what God told him to do, but they had to return to Bethlehem. Now, when they got there, 
it wasn't that there wasn't a motel because they you didn't stay in motels at that time. They they would be staying with family. The problem was with the census taking place, all the family's homes were filled. So there here's where people get into well, they had to stay in a barn. No, they wasn't in a barn. Back then the people's houses were built and hewed usually around rock. There was a lower spot, and then there was an upper chamber. Well, the upper chamber, the inn, was where you lived. The lower chamber was where you brought your animals in of a night and everything, and you had a manger to feed them and everything, you know, which was usually hewn out of the stone, and you had steps that led up to the major li living quarter. Well, that was the thing. You were able to, on the cold nights, use the heat from your animals to help warm the house. And at the same time, you knew that your animals were safe because you had them locked down. Basically, it was like a sheepfold. So that's where Mary and Joseph were at. They were down in the lower part. They were still in the house, but they were down in the lower part where the animals would be kept. Because they, the upper was already filled up with so many people. But modern concept is that they, they, they were turned away everywhere they went. That isn't how things worked back in that day. You, you didn't turn your family away, and everything. It's just that the, nobody, nobody had an actual bed bed for them to stay in in the upper part of what was called the inn. But as you study Luke. And as you go on through, you see Jesus' life. The angels proclaimed him as the Messiah, the King. As you study and read, you see where Jesus, everything that the angels said, Mary kept in her heart. And there was more prophecy as you go on and you study Luke and everything. I mean, you, you, have, you have a prophecy of Simeon. Simeon was an elderly man and everything, and he, he'd been told it by the Spirit that he would not die before he saw the Messiah. So he was in the temple when Jesus was brought on the eighth day of his birth. They brought him to the temple to be circumcised and to be dedicated to the Lord. The firstborn child was always dedicated to the Lord, firstborn son. Well, when Simeon saw the baby, and he held him in his arm, he began to prophesy about him. Now, he wasn't the only one who was there. There was old Anna. Now, Anna was considered a prophetess, and she was always in the temple, fasting and praying, because she'd been a widow for years. She was 80-something at that time. And when she saw Jesus, she began to speak of what all would happen. But Simeon had told him that you know, many in Israel would fall because of Jesus, but many others would be saved. The reason he said many would fall is because when Jesus started his ministry, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the scribes, the priests, they didn't want to hear what Jesus had to say. They thought that Jesus should be coming to learn from them. And because they never would accept Jesus as the Messiah, basically they fell. But those who truly believed in Jesus were saved, and we are saved today. We have to believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, not because it's some myth that been thrown down through the years and everything. There's more written proof of Jesus being an actual man, that an account of his life is totally accurate. There's more proof to back up the Bible than there is about Plato, Socrates, all these people that were supposed to be so great philosophers and this, that, and the other. There's more history backing up the Bible. The Bible can be trusted. The Bible is what is a Christian's mainstay. It's our owner's manual to tell us what we need to do to keep ourselves in spiritual shape. When you study the, the book of Luke, and as we get ready to approach Christmas season, I ask you to open your mind. Don't go with a preconceived notion. 
Look at it, study it, read it, and do it with an open heart. Because if you close your heart, you will miss the blessings that God has for you when you study his word. Many people today, when they go, they get the electronic version of a Bible. And what they do, they hit search. And they go looking for something to back up whatever position they're trying to defend. That's not what the Bible's for. The Bible is to show us where we've gone wrong. The Bible is to show us what we're supposed to do to be on the right path. As I said, it's an owner's manual. It's also a history book, a philosophy book, a song book. It is, you, you could say it's a math book, especially if you read numbers and things like that. As you study the Bible, you have to study every part of it. Now, but if you take the next 24 days and you study the book of Luke, you read all 24 chapters, and you do it with an open mind. And you think, as you study, pray. Be faithful in your prayer, saying, Lord, come into my heart. Help me to understand this. Help me to see what I've never seen before. And I promise you, if you do that, God will bless you with the Holy Spirit, and he will get you going, and you will be so happy that you've done that. Because if you have the joy of Jesus in your heart, you can't help but show that joy to everybody you know. Kindness is not an act. Kindness is what happens when you let Jesus lead your life. There are many out there today who claim to be Christians, but they've never truly got to know Jesus. There are Christians in what they say but they're not Christians in the life they lead. And that's the thing. As you study the Bible, you will want to become more and more like Jesus, as the old song says. Jesus is the all in all. He's our Messiah. He's our Savior. He is the one who's helped speak the world into creation. He is one third of the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Wrap your mind around that and understand that they're all one. And yet, there's three different. God looks down on us and he wants to save everybody. Jesus came to save us from our sins. Not to save us in our sins. To save us from our sins. You cannot say that you are a follower of Jesus and expect to keep on sinning and then get into heaven. That's not going to work. Jesus, in talking, you, you read his red letters. Those red letters will convict you that you need a Savior. Study the book of Luke. Try it for the 24 days. It's a challenge. And I guarantee you, if you do it faithfully, honestly, and prayerfully, it'll be a challenge that changes your life. And if you don't understand, then pray for a little more discernment. God will give it to you. And as Pastor Brian has always liked to say, use the version of the Bible that is easiest for you to understand. You know, you heard me read from the New Living Translation. I have nothing against the King James Version or the New King James Version. It's just that sometimes when I'm speaking like this, it's a whole lot easier for folks to understand what I'm saying if I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I've gotten into the New King James and the King James Version, and I had an English teacher who helped me to understand the old English and everything. But nowadays, sometimes you need that newer translation. So use the Bible that you are comfortable with, whether it be the King James, the New Living Translation, the Amplified Bible. But take the challenge. Spend the next 24 days with Jesus through the book of Luke. I guarantee you, if you do that, 
you'll have a better Christian outlook and you'll want to be more like Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Let us end with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for our many blessings. We are grateful for all that you've given us this day. Father, we ask that you be with those that are sick. Touch them with your healing hand, if it be thy will. Father, we have many friends and family that we know are not well today. Reach out and touch them. Father, I see the kids today. I drive a school bus. I ask that you reach out and touch these kids that I've been seeing all these years. They, know, they don't know you. I see them wearing the cross. Father, they do not know what the cross signifies. To them, it's a piece of jewelry. I ask that you reach out and touch their hearts so that they may know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. This world is going crazy, Father, and Jesus cannot get here soon enough. The sooner we can get the word of Jesus out to all the world, the sooner he will be here. Help us as we take this challenge and help us to learn more about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, folks. Enjoy this last song.